Welcome to the summit. Thanks for stopping by Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad to be visiting with you today about sports. Uh, again, fall of 2020, we're just happy to be talking about sports right now. And today on the summit, our guest is Terry Harrison, the head football coach at Bethel College, whose team just lit up the scoreboard on Saturday. Coach, 83-35, to 35. let's just start right there. Obviously, a new school record for scoring on Saturday in a win against Mid-America Nazarene. Yeah, no, it was a really fun night. You know, it's uh, one of those deals where everything tend to click. We had a bunch of really big plays, you know, and guys running for, I mean, I think we had six 60 plus yard runs. And so, you know, it's one of those nights where it makes you look really smart as a football coach. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate that out of our kids. I'll say that. <laughs> well, uh, think about this too, 20 points per quarter, at least 20 points in each quarter. And, and you that, that's one of those things that, that you can look back on someday and just go, wow, a full game where you just didn't let off 20 points at least per quarter. You know, another school record that was broken over the course of the evening was the school record for rushing yards, 610 rushing yards on the evening. Uh, Coach, that's just amazing. Cameron Harrison led the way. You had two players that topped the century mark. Cameron Harrison with 163 yards, and your quarterback, Zach Esau, had 107. And by the way, with Harrison's rushing, you know, you talked about those long plays, 18.1 yards per carry. Yeah, you know, that's what's, what's crazy. So, you know, we run a unique offense. We run the flex bone, you know, which is actually um, the last I checked was it's the most popular offense in Kansas high school. So people are familiar with it. Um, and so it's pretty common in our state, but you don't see uh, a lot of times you don't see the big explosive runs. Um, but, man, our, we've returned so many players and our kids really know what we're doing. And, man, they just they can adjust on the fly. They check us into the right plays. And I think what they did on Saturday was the communication they had between each other. We were just locked in. Our guys had opportunities to make big plays out on the perimeter. And it came down to one block and one little move. And, um, you know, Cameron's so explosive. He's a senior. He's been here for four years, a three-year starter. Um, it, it's just one of those deals where um, and our perimeter blocking was great. Offensive block line played very well. And Zach making all those reads was just um, – man, it was, it was, like we said, a really fun night. And we have really good players. And, um, you know, it was, it was kind of cool to see that kind of explode the way it did. We're here on the summit talking with Terry Harrison, the head football coach at Bethel in his third season. And by the way, I encourage you to like and share this video. And please do consider subscribing to the channel, Midwest Sports Net, where we talk a lot about small college sports. And we're talking NAI football right now. And coach, it's interesting you mentioned the, the high school football in the state of Kansas right there. Your quarterback, Zach Esau, uh, recruited out of, out of Kansas and, and comes to play for Bethel there. But not uh, not that flex bone office. I mean, he was a dual threat quarterback in high school, but his senior year he passed for nearly three thousand yards. Uh, that's clearly not a part of uh, what what the offense is doing right now. But you know, he's found a way to just adjust and adapt, and and really leading your team well. Yeah, well, you know, kind of the thing with it is, there's a little bit of misconception out, out there about what we do. It is not three yards in a cloud of dust. You know, we read he's reading two people every play, and so as a recruiter. How do you find kids like that? Uh, who's a shrine? He, like you mentioned, he's a shrine bowler from Heston, Kansas. Uh, won a state championship in the 800 meters. I mean, just mentally tough kid. Um, an excellent high school football player. So, how do you find kids like that and project them into doing what you do on offense? And so, you know, whether you're a, a option quarterback like we run or a spread quarterback, anytime a young man is reading, and I mean, we have so many great high school coaches in the state of Kansas that they're doing complex stuff and the game has evolved so much and they're working year round and these kids are doing seven on seven in the summer. So what we can do is project, if you're reading secondary players, you can read a defensive end. If you're reading, you know, all these things and the RPOs people are doing, what we just try to find, as long as a quarterback is reading something in high school, no matter the offense, it will translate to what we do. Um, we just have to read a little faster because obviously those guys are closer to the ball. And um, he's just a great example of that. Who's going to have um, he's going to go down as a leading touchdown scorer in Bethel history. Um, he's going to be, you know, one of those guys that's talked about for a long time around here. And so it's fun to see a local kid that's a Kansas Shrine Bowl or state champion track kid. And now he's going to be, you know, you know, potential player of the year type of guy and, you know, have a, a, a legacy of success here at Bethel. So it's um, it's really cool to see that. That's a great explanation, Coach. I really appreciate that. And, you know, that's always something that that's fantastic, too. I, I would imagine for uh, you and, and the program, when when you have talented players, and especially if they're local kids, I mean, you, you're going to get some some backsides in the stands up there to support that team, and and uh, that's going to go a long way for you. 
Yeah, you know, we're 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 in the state of Kansas and we certainly have kids from all over the country. I mean, we have kids from from Key West, Florida, all the way to Los Angeles, California, up into Akron, Ohio, and down as far south as Brownsville, Texas. We do have kids from everywhere and we want to recruit nationally. But at the same time, we take great pride in being in playing the most Kansas players of any any school, any level in the state of Kansas. And we're doing that. Um, we have 10 shrine, Kansas Shrine Bowlers on our roster right now. And so we want to be the home of small college football for those Kansas Shrine Bowl kids that are fantastic football players um, that, that may not be 6'5", 300 pounds that can play offensive line, but they can come and play for us and be an All-American candidate. Um, I think we had the first uh, Offensive Player of the Week last week as an offensive lineman in our conference's history. And so <laughs> yeah. that young man was an eight-man fullback, all right, and he's playing guard for us. And so, you know, kids like that that are Shrine Bowl kids, that, that their coach's favorite kid, they can come here. This is the home for the elite players in Kansas that, you know, maybe they don't have the height or maybe they don't have, you know, some of the things that, you know, for right or wrong that the the big boys are looking for. Right. And uh, we know we can be very successful with those kids. And um, we've been very fortunate. That was the plan when we got here and it's kind of paying off for us right now. So it's been, uh, you know, just an awesome job for of really appreciate the Kansas high school coaches who are pushing these kids to us or at least tell them to consider us. Right. And then obviously the families that are buying into what we're doing. So that's been, um, it's been really fun to see as a former high school coach. You know, it does seem to be paying off for you, Coach, because uh, in your third season there, as we're speaking with Coach Terry Harrison from Bethel, uh, improving the win total in each of the previous two seasons and really putting yourself in a position to improve that win total right now. I want to go back to that in a moment, but let's talk about one other, other player individually, too, coming out of that game. You know, the offense is always going to be remembered for this game. You put 83 points on the board, that's going to be the first thing people think about, no doubt, uh, in the future when they look back on that. And yet – you come away with the NAI Defensive Player of the Week in this contest, Josh Seabold, who had 15 tackles, nine of them solo tackles, six tackles for loss, four of which were sacks. Oh, and he had a forced fumble as well. So a uh, pretty good day at the office for Seabold. Yeah, you know, again, another Kansas high school football player. Um, most people know that name because he was a two-time 195-pound state champion wrestler from Cimarron. And so any high school coach or any fan of wrestling out there knows 195 pounds is where the dudes are at. All right? <laughs> so he was a two-time state champion wrestler, and I believe his last, he was undefeated as a senior wrestling 195 out in western Kansas, which is only tough kids. The only, the only type of kid in western Kansas is a tough kid, right? And he was the, he was the number one kid out there. And so he came to play linebacker for us. Um, he was really our first big Kansas sign. He was a Shrine Bowler. I think he was the captain of the Shrine Bowl team and 2017, whatever year that was, um, 18. And so then to come here and have that week, that, that's what he has done. Um, I think he he's just one of those kids that's tough, does a great job, and, and the fact that he had that big game was really cool. He's been conference player of the week before. This was his first national player of the week. I mean, the last person to do that at Bethel was a Hall of Famer. And so that kind of projects a little bit of where Josh is headed at in his career. And one of the things we talk about here is, you know, the NAI football has been around for over 100 years. I mean, just a long time. Um, people forget that, you know, Pitt State, and Port, uh, Washburn, those guys were all in, uh, NAI schools before they made the bump and went NCAA Division II. And the only reason I mention that is Josh Siebel is on track to finish his career as the leading tackler in NAI history. Not, not KCAC, not um, local. I mean, in the, in the history of NAI football, which has included teams of that nature, He's going to finish his career most likely as long as he stays on track and healthy as the leading tackler in NEI history. It's just amazing, you know, and it's not even something we track. We just look at it before the summer and our SID was like, holy cow, look at this. And so, um, It's cool to see he wants to win more than anything. But, you know, kids like that who just focus on those things, that's kind of who reaps rewards like this. And um, we're just uh, I think it's an amazing stat that hopefully, you know, hopefully that all comes to fruition in the end and it'll be really good and he'll have a great career. Well, I can guarantee you that's on our radar now, and we're going to be following that at Midwest Sports Net. I, I promise you that. Uh, cool. Coach, your team 4-0 and now, uh, one of two teams in the NAI that's 4-0, and Concordia of Nebraska, also with a 4-0 and record uh, following this past weekend. So leading the way right there, when you talk about the summer and, and looking at some things, uh, during the summer did you you know look up, uh, look at the schedule, and, and uh, think, wow, you know, if everything goes right, we, we could be 4-0 and at this point. 
Yeah, you know, we were eight and three last year and lost two games that, you know, arguably shouldn't have, right? We just didn't play well in the fourth quarter in one of them and and the we just had some turnover. So we we could have very well been 10 and one last year. Um and then, you know, when you look at we returned uh, 21 of 22 starters. Um, we've returned 36 kids that played significant minutes in the last two years. And so, you know, when you're a new coach in 2018 and you recruit a whole new crop of kids and you're really young, you kind of take some lumps that first year and kids get, get some experience. And so we knew coming in that we, we had just had a, a good group of kids, great families here that love football and the commitment they've made to be in, um, you know, just a, a successful program is, is starting to pay off. And, you know, we know we have some tough, uh, some tough games ahead of us, certainly, but we are excited about our team and the, you know, just the, the work they put in every day. We know that as long as we do what we're supposed to do, we're going to give ourselves a chance to win. Right. And if we can not turn the ball over, tackle well and block, you know, we're going to have a shot. And so that's, um, you know, that's been pretty exciting. And, you know, Bethel struggled for a long time. So the fact that, you know, we're able to be competitive and have a chance to win every Saturday, just a really fun place to play and coach right now. Well, I think you're getting some national attention right now as well, and and uh, we'll continue to uh, to do our part here on Midwest Sports Net because we know you guys are doing a great job, Coach. The the season continues. Not this weekend. You have the open weekend this weekend. Following that, you host friends. And interestingly enough, the way the schedule falls this year. But hey, everything's interesting in 2020. I know. Uh, but the way the schedule falls this year, this is the second of four four straight games to be played there in North Newton. But that is going to be this next Saturday. You have friends. Talk about your upcoming schedule. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's so fluid, you know, I think the first week we were trying to look at some things and then, you know, with, with, with COVID and, and it's not even necessarily a football issue, right? It's the campus issues, right? And so the, the schedule could change on a dime and on a Monday or on a Tuesday. And so, you know, we're just taking it day by day. We have, you know, we're a praying program and we've been, uh, we've been just thankful every, every chance we get to play. I think we're one of 10 teams in the country at any level that have played four games. That's not lost on us. We're just thankful for the fact that we've got to play. Um, but we do know that it, it sounds like coach speak and you probably had people say this. We do take it day by day. And I think every coach is doing, I mean, people used to say that to just be, give you coach speak, but now it really is day by day. And we know on a Friday, your game can get canceled. And so, we're just going to keep, uh, you know, stacking wins daily and give ourselves a chance to win. And if we get to play, we're going to play with gratefulness and gratitude and thankfulness. And if we don't, we're going to go back to practice. And so we'll see how this all plays out. But certainly love playing here at home. And, you know, for people out there, Bethel truly is a special place. And, you know, what's funny is you get these local small colleges. A lot of people take that for granted. And they, they don't even go out to watch and see what it's like. But I can tell you the level of football play that's in our in our conference right now I'm a former high school coach. I've had kids play all over the country. It's a, uh, it's just an awesome opportunity for people to see a high level of football. And, um, you know, we're going to take advantage of that every Saturday. All right, coach. Well, uh, success to you then for the remainder of this season. And, and, uh, I appreciate what you say about that. And it's always good to be a praying program and, and to be thankful for what you have. And, and right now, obviously there's a lot to be thankful for. So we want to recognize that uh, Thresher's four and O to get the 2020 campaign underway. And it's a campaign that will stretch into 2021 again. Uh, welcome to current year. So, uh, it's a, it's quite a ride coach Terry Harrison. Thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit. Thank you, Joey. And we appreciate all of you all for watching. Please, again, do like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel, Midwest Sports Net, and uh, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.